Here is a bulletin from Associated Press and the WBAP Newsroom. President Kennedy may have been shot in Dallas. Stay tuned to WBAP 820 for the latest on this tragic event. Stay tuned to WBAP 824 for further developments in the unconfirmed report that President Kennedy may have been shot in Dallas. Here is a bulletin from Associated Press and the WBAP newsroom. President Kennedy has been reported taken to Parkland Hospital in Dallas. That's near the Dallas trademark where he was scheduled to make a speech. Here is a tape report from Dallas. It's not known for sure, but it is believed that President Kennedy has been shot. President Kennedy was in a motorcade en route to the trademark where he was to address a luncheon gathering shortly after noon today. As I say, it has not been fully confirmed, but police radios are carrying that the president has been hit. The president's party, his wife, the governor, senators, and all other political officials were en route as fast as they could get there to Parkland Hospital under heavy police siren guard going extremely fast past the trademark, past the large throngs of people awaiting to catch a glimpse of the president. It's thought that the incident occurred near the underpass entering the Stevens Expressway just on the outskirts of downtown Dallas. This unit is presently en route to Parkland Hospital. Confirmation will come shortly. From Dallas, Bob Welch, WBAP Radio News. Here's a further bulletin from WBAP News. Did you see the shooting, Miss? Yes, sir. Can you describe what happened? They were driving along, uh, and we were the only people in this area on our side, and the shots came from directly across the street from us. And just as the president's car became directly even with us, we took one look at him, and he was sitting there. He and Jackie were looking at a dog that was in the middle of a seat, and about that time, two shots rang out just as he looked up. This is the president looked up, and these two shots rang out, and he grabbed his chest, and it looked like he was in pain, and he fell over in the seat, and Jackie fell over on him and said, my God, he's been shot. Uh, and soon after that, more shots rang out, and the car sped away. The shots came from the hill. From the hill? Uh, yes. Uh, as it was just east of the underpass. Did you see anyone? I thought I saw this man running, but I looked at the president, and, you know, for a while, and I looked up there, and I thought I saw a man running. And so, um, right after that, I guess I didn't have any better sense. I started running up there, too. Here again is Tom Whalen with further reports on this story. At last reports, U.S. Representative Albert uh, Thomas who is with the Kennedy party, Albert Thomas of Houston, said both men, both John Conley and President Kennedy, shot but were still alive at the emergency room at Parkland Hospital in Dallas. He had been told the president was still alive but in very critical condition. Stay tuned to WBAP News for further details. Total Information News from WBAP Fort Worth. Tom Whalen reporting. As you've heard on WBAP for the past half hour, President Kennedy has been shot. Representative Albert Thomas of Houston said a few minutes ago that uh, both the governor, uh, Conley, and the president were alive. The Secret Service said the president remained in the emergency room and that the governor was moved to the general operating room of Parkland Hospital. Two Roman Catholic priests were summoned to the emergency room where the president lay, one was identified as a father, uh, Newber. Here is more on it. Uh, Tom, I've got something. Here's David Daniel now with a later report. David? Uh, Dallas newsman James Darnell just called, saying that Dallas County Sheriff's Office has arrested a neatly dressed young man in his early 20s uh, for the uh, attempted uh, assassination of President Kennedy. He explicitly denies the shooting and says he has witnesses to prove it. They are moving him to the sheriff's office now. A neatly dressed young man in his 20s is being held as a suspect in the presidential assassination attempt. That was David Daniel with a late uh, bulletin on it. I'll be back with the latest weather information and more news in a moment. 
Now you have complete news coverage of Arlington, Eulis, Haltom, Hearst, Richland Hills, and the Mansfield area in the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. With the establishment of the new Mid-Cities Bureau, you'll get even more coverage in the Star-Telegram. Dial Crestview 42555 or go by 601 West Main in Arlington. Here again, Tom Whalen. We have no more details on the Kennedy and Connolly shooting except at last reports, both Governor Connolly and President Kennedy, both wounded but still alive, the president said to be extremely critical at Parkland Hospital. Your straight line to reliable reporting, WBAP Fort Worth, where the news comes first. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this program to bring you this bulletin from the WBAP newsroom. Here is David Daniel. President Kennedy is dead. Stay tuned for further developments. In Dallas Crime Lab, Lieutenant J.C. Day just came out of uh, that building with a British 303 rifle and a telescopic sight. It was found on the sixth floor at a corner window. There they found three empty 303 cartridge cases, scraps, of chicken, as if a person had been there for some time. Boxes of textbooks stacked up on three sides of the sniper's nest were found. A gun rest made of papers near the open window. That building was the Texas School Depository. Again, the 303 cartridge, the spent cartridges, and the 303 rifle have been found. We now join ABC. The average man in the street was rather bewildered by the fast-breaking news. An on-the-scene report now from Ted Koppel, ABC, at the United Nations. At the United Nations, as probably in every other part of New York, people are asking one another the question that begins with, is it true, and ends with a helpless shrug. Most of the people have not yet heard the final word. A surprising number have not yet heard at all. For the moment, everything is continuing as normal. Groups of school children and visitors from all over the world are waiting online for their tours to begin. One woman, who had heard of the president's assassination, said merely, I hate to think of what it'll mean. A man said quietly, just like Lincoln, he was shot because of slavery, too. At 3 o'clock, the General Assembly was scheduled to begin its session. At that time, the U.N., like every other body in the world, may understand the first implications of what has really happened. This is Ted Koppel at the United Nations. This is David Daniel reporting. The Dallas Police Department today arrested a 24-year-old man, Lee H. Oswald, in connection with the slaying of a Dallas policeman shortly after President Kennedy was assassinated. He was also being interrogated to see if he had any connection with the slaying of the president. Oswald was pulled screaming and yelling from the Texas theater in the Oak Cliff section of Dallas. He brandished a pistol, which officers took away from him after a scuffle. Police officer M. N. McDonald, who was cut across the face in the scuffle, quoted Oswald as saying after he was subdued, Well, it's all over now. It's not known whether he referred to the president's assassination or merely his arrest. A large crowd had congregated around the theater and witnessed the arrest. Police had to hold the crowds back because many apparently connected the arrested man with the slaying of the president. This is David Daniel reporting. This is Tom Whalen reporting for WBAP News. Dallas homicide detective Lavelle told WBAP newsman James Kerr in Dallas... Just a few minutes ago, they have little doubt that 24-year-old Lee Oswald of Dallas is a man who shot and killed Dallas police officer J.D. Tippett. Now, on November the 1st, 1959, Oswald told the United States Embassy in Moscow that he had applied for Soviet citizenship. He said he had been a tourist in Russia since October 13th that year. Oswald is reported to have a Russian wife. The Fort Worth Star-Telegram confirmed that the man held in Dallas is the same Oswald, and said his mother is being taken to Dallas Police Headquarters at the present time to see him. This bulletin from the WBAP Newsroom. You're listening to WBAP 570 in Fort Worth. We have canceled our regular programs in order to keep you informed on developments concerning the assassination of President of the United States, John F. Kennedy. How about some observations from another man of the ABC News team? We take you now to Chicago and Paul Harvey. Good evening, Americans. We are just never ready for this kind of thing in this country. 
We deplore the hotheads elsewhere in the world who change governments with guns, but we try to ignore the fact that now four of our own presidents have been cut down by assassins. It had been such a tremendous welcome at the Dallas airport and all along the parade route that Mrs. Kennedy, who had become perhaps his greatest political asset, turned to her husband and said, You can't say Dallas wasn't friendly to you. Moments later, in the back seat of that open car, she cradled her husband's bleeding head in her arms, saying, Oh, no, oh, no. Top speed, it was still five minutes to Parkland Hospital. Mrs. Kennedy did not collapse, no hysteria. When she entered the hospital, her chic fuchsia suit was covered with her husband's blood. President Kennedy, within 30 minutes, was dead from a bullet in his brain. There was another wound in the president's neck, which could have been from the same bullet. Mrs. Kennedy's wish was to return to Washington immediately to be with the children. The bullets, by now you know, came from a warehouse window. On the fifth floor, police found the remains of some fried chicken and some paper. The assassin had waited there for some time. And a Mauser rifle with a scope sight. Three cartridges fired, one still in the chamber. Dallas policemen advised that a suspect had entered a theater in the Riverside section, chased him there. There was a shootout. One policeman was killed. The suspect was captured, Lee H. Oswald, at 24. They dragged him from the theater, screaming. Evidence is piling up against him. He was employed in the building where the murder weapon was found. Lee H. Oswald traveled in Russia in 1959, married a Russian woman, renounced his American citizenship, tried to apply for Russian citizenship. And it's significant to me that Moscow Radio today hastened to say that our president had been killed by extreme right-wing elements. Now it develops the assassin's allegiance was red. He wore a brown shirt, uniform of a Castro-Communist terrorist, and he, Lee Oswald, is chairman of the pro-Castro outfit called the Fair Play for Cuba Committee. Governor Connolly, with a bullet through his back that came out his chest, fractured his wrist, underwent surgery. He is conscious, condition good. Vice President Johnson, who was riding in a separate car a considerable distance behind Kennedy's, was unhurt. Lyndon Johnson is now President of the United States. Within less than two hours of the president's death aboard the presidential plane in Dallas, Johnson took the oath of office sworn in by a woman judge and then took off with the widow and the body for Washington. When the first news came today, before it was even confirmed that the president had been killed, a flood of cell orders hit the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. They rang the bell, closed down for the day, but before they could, industrials had plummeted $21. And the commodity exchanges closed down and Congress recessed and sporting events most everywhere scheduled for tonight are canceled. Pope Paul, advised, went to his private chapel to pray. General Douglas MacArthur, in a telegram to Mrs. Kennedy tonight, said, quote, I realize the utter futility of words at such a time, but as a former comrade in arms, his death kills something within me. President's special car has a bulletproof bubble glass top, but the top was down today so that he could wave to the enthusiastic crowds. The Dallas reception was the most enthusiastic of any stop in Texas. For weeks, a big debate raged over who of the city's luminaries would get to sit at the head table this noon. Nobody did. And on the president's White House desk tonight are the calls and the callers and the documents and the urgent things to be done which could not possibly await his attention for another day. But they will wait now. It is for us that one must grieve tonight. For a generation which has so refined its intellect that it can split atoms and communicate with the moon, and yet remains at the mercy of its own undisciplined emotions. If the world is one day destroyed, it'll come just like this, you know. It'll not be the H-bomb that did it. It'll be the greed or the fear or the hate that set it off. Paul Harvey, good night. ABC Chicago.